Let's talk about the Indian pangolin. Now it's an important animal considering the civil services exams, but also it is important from other exams perspective where questions on Indian biodiversity is asked. On the screen, what you can see is the image of the Indian pangolin. Now this is a rodent, a mammal comes from the rodent family and it has got scales on its skin. The scales are basically made up of keratin. They are keratin scales. Keratin happens to be the same protein which is found in our fingernails, right? So keratin scales and this image on the right when you see, this is the image that the, uh, that the pangolin creates when it is, uh, you know, when it is in fear or when it is protecting itself from the predators. So this is what is the pangolin. By the way, pangolins are also found in a other countries. They are found in China, they are found in Myanmar, they are found in Southeast Asia, across Southeast Asia in fact. Right? But this one what we are discussing is the Indian pangolin. So what is interesting about the Indian pangolin is, the Indian pangolin is an insectivore. By the way, all pangolins are insectivores. They mostly eat on ants as well as termites. Right? And you know what guys, because of their function of eating ants and termites, they are also famously called or referred as ecosystem engineers. What is an ecosystem engineer? This term is an actually recognized term and this term basically means that animals which have an impact or organisms that have an impact in shaping their immediate ecosystem. Like just take a, uh, take a hint here, when pangolins eat ants and termites, we all know that ants happens to loosen the soil. Termites happens to eat wood. So when you talk about ants and termites, termites are famously known as lignolytic, right? They can easily, or cellulolytic, they can easily break down the cellulose of the wood. They can easily break down the lignin of the wood, of the plant cells. So termites and ants, when they eat up the wood and the soil and they loosen the soil, it makes it unfavorable for trees to grow. Trees becomes vulnerable to fall, trees becomes vulnerable in growing further if termites start eating them. All of us have seen termites how they impact even a live tree is vulnerable to termites. Now if a pangolin eats the termites and the ants, it somehow helps in controlling the population of the termites. You know, pangolins have been, have, uh, an, an, another interesting fact I'll tell you, the Indian pangolins, they are toothless they do not have teeth, they are toothless. Rather, they have a long sticky tongue. So with the help of the long sticky tongue, it, they can penetrate deep into the termite colonies, into the ant colonies and eat them. And when they eat these termites, they happen to control the population of lignolytic and cellulitic organisms. And that's how they help the trees continue to flourish. Now just imagine if the termites ever go extinct, uh, so uh, if the pangolins ever go extinct, the termites will have a chance of expanding their, uh, 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 their population, they will have a chance of expanding their colonies to such an extent that a lot of trees which are right now protected because of pangolin controlling the population of termites, they may eventually become vulnerable. Let's look at some of the other factors. So that's the reason why it is called an ecosystem engineer. It is also one of the most illegally traded animal in the world, in the world guys. The reason why it is illegally traded, one of the reasons are it, it is mainly because of habitat loss, its, its population is already decreasing. Because of poaching, illegal encroachment, that is also another reason why it is its population declining. But one major reason is its illegal trade. In a lot of societies, especially the lot of traditional Chinese societies, there is a huge demand of the keratin. There is a huge demand of this keratin, which is believed to be, you know, a source for curing lot many large scale ailments. So pangolins are heavily demanded in the Chinese black market because of their skin, because of their scales and the keratin that is produced out of it. When you talk about the colors of the pangolin, the scale colors, they normally depend on the color of the soil where they are normally found. They are found in the soil. So if the scale colors is somewhat similar to the color of the soil, then this creates a kind of a camouflage for pangolins which can help pangolins survive against or protect itself against the predators. When you talk about its other protective mechanisms, so pangolins also can create a noxious smelling chemical which can also push the predators away. 
So these are some natural defenses that pangolins have in order to protect itself against the predators. Its presence, it has got these large and tough overlapping scales that are made up of keratin. It's, an, it's a mammal, comes under the rodent family. Now, what is another interesting fact about pangolins are that when, when pangolins are feeding on the termites and ants, they use the sticky tongue, but that sticky tongue also sometimes carries some small rocks, some, sol some small stones. And these small rocks and stones, they go and accumulate in the stomach of the pangolin. Right. So we call this condition as gastroliths. Gastroliths are found in various organisms. These are nothing but small stones that get deposited in the stomach of an, anim of an animal. So when you talk about crocodiles, when you talk about many reptiles who are feeding on insects, they often have some of the stones, some of the small, small particles, rocks, they get accumulated in their stomach. Now these stones actually help in grinding the food when it is in the stomach because we know that pangolins are toothless so how does it grind the food so that it can be digested and absorbed and the nutrients are absorbed it is possible only with the help of the stones that get absorbed or stones that get trapped in the stomach of the animal they are playing an important role in grinding the food when you talk about its survival it is mostly nocturnal that means they are active during the night they sleep during the daytime and where do they sleep? You guys can easily take a hint. Most rodents are burrowing animals. They basically, you know, use their strong claws to create burrows and they live inside the burrows throughout the night, avoid the extreme heat of the daytime. And guys, this is known as subterranean. So whenever you see the word subterranean fauna, it simply means those animals which have a preference or living under the ground or living inside the burrows or under the ground. We call it subterranean fauna. So most pangolins are subterranean fauna guys. They prefer to live underground. And guys, they live in solitary. That means they don't live in groups. They don't live in colonies. All pangolins are likely to be found in isolation. And guys, this is somewhat a way of capturing them more easily because of their solitary survival. Their habitats mostly are found across India, except the dry areas of the country it is found almost across the country in, it is also found in pakistan nepal bangladesh and sri lanka the indian pangolin it is distributed in all these areas by the way in india we also have some chinese pangolins also found chinese pangolins happens to be a little darker considering that uh, the type of the soil there and they are found in the northeast part of the country so if UPSC ever ask a question regarding the distribution of pangolins, remember pangolins are found across the South, South Asian subcontinent, but India also, you know, provides uh, habitat for Chinese pangolins. When you talk about their status in the International Union for Conservation of Nature, they are right now considered to be endangered. That means their population has already started declining more than 70%. More than 70% population has already declined. And when you talk about their status in the CITES, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna, they have been put under Appendix 1. Appendix 1 of CITES basically means that these are species which are traded but are also threatened at the same time they are threatened so they are popular in the international trade but are also threatened of course they are threatened because they have been put in the endangered category of the IUCN red list when you talk about the wildlife protection act it has been listed in the schedule one again that means absolute protection is given to pangolins and if any threat ever is found maximum punishment is also going to be given they are not listed in the cms because they are not considered to be migratory they are non-migratory in nature guys right so because they are completely non-migratory they are not listed in the convention on migratory species so guys this much of information for pangolin should be enough considering the upsc exam i believe the information was helpful stay tuned we'll be coming with more videos like this